any time you can get it closer to uptake. So that's the timing part. You know, more up front, right in front of the crop at planting with the planter or whatever, or in season is ideal. But we have a lot of different options, especially with liquid. Yep. Uh, but to getting it closer to when the crop needs it is really important. And not to go back to this, Phil, and I hate to beat our own drum here, but I did make that video in June that said this is going to be a problem in places. You did. Hi, my name is Jake Bossenkemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Look and Grow. While we're up in beautiful North Central Iowa establishing fall treatments for research trials, and Miss Marketing Director Katie, we're making videos. I haven't shaven in three days, my hair's a mess for my beanie, but here we are, we're doing it. So we're up in beautiful North Central Iowa, and uh, you know, the talk up here, Phil, uh, has been variation in corn yield. You know, down in Eastern Iowa in general, you know, in my region, we had tremendous corn yields, but, but there are some surprises even down there where, you know, this field is just way off my other fields. And when you get to talking, they had a lot of rain, maybe poorly drained fields, seen a lot of pictures of kernel abortion. I'm gonna say with a reasonable amount of certainty, the yield variation down there was caused by too much water and the associated nitrogen loss, which is why I made that video in June telling guys, hey, we've had a lot of rain, and loss could be a concern. So Phil, uh, what about up here in North Central Iowa? I've, I've heard that discussion up here too. What do you think is causing the yield variation up here? Yeah, I think the majority of it goes back to what you're saying. I think we're basically gonna have a, a four hours discussion on this because uh, everything revolving around nitrogen placement, timing, the product, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we really gotta tune that in and this year uh, exacerbated the issue. What we got to understand is nitrogen is probably is the number one nutrient we work with that's most volatile in the soil environment in general, you know, and, and it's really tough to manage. So we, you know, in this part of the state, we do have more fall application, fall anhydrous applications. There's a lot of that that happens. Uh, so being careful for sure when you're putting that on, you know, it's like you said, it's beautiful. It is cooling off finally, but um, you know, yeah, I got my bibbies on. It's yeah, a little brisk cool this morning. <laughs> it's cooling off now, but the last few weeks, you know, in terms of fall, we're kind of doing a, a summer, yeah, a winter kind yeah. of thing again. And, uh, and so, it's going to warm up. Again. And it's going to warm up. Yeah, we're getting back into the 70s. So that means soil temps, obviously, even four to six inches down, that buffer, you know, they're still not that cold. So making sure that you're putting on at the right time and putting something to keep the, basically the bacteria from converting it is, is important too. But that, that's one of the things I think that led into the 2024 here issues we had, but just the amount of rainfall and the timing that we had it in. You know, we a lot of stuff got planted early and then there was a break and we got, I, I, I don't think the, the rooting was such an issue other than we had too much moisture, which slowed down rooting and we had a lot of diseases in corn. So, so back to the anhydrous thing real quick. So, you know, fall anhydrous, it's always, you know, risky when you apply your anhydrous seven or eight months before the crop takes it up but i think the point you're making is you know it's particularly risky if you're out there when the soil temperatures are 65 60 degrees because that ammonia is converting to nitrate rapidly yeah yeah exactly and then you know that's why you put a nitrification inhibitor in there but and, and anhydrous naturally kills the stuff that's around it yep. um the, the nitrification inhibitor helps uh, prolong that but uh, you got to realize that if it's the soil temperature is warm and those in, the the biology is working overtime they're going to break through that even in the fall and you definitely don't want that we don't want it converting in the fall because we still got to make it to to may essentially mm -hmm. you know yeah. the crop's really not taking that much up and that plays right into the timing part of it you know we're talking about fall applications so split applying is ideal but getting it closer to when the crop takes it up is also important so that we don't have that conversion to nitrate when nothing has taken it up absolutely so, yep so yeah, that, that in the spring, I would say that the, the next thing that I saw in a lot of cases was, uh, you know, split application is, is likely going to pay this year. For sure. Uh, it yeah. was a, a big deal. Uh, so if you can, I know logistically that's challenging for a lot of uh, growers, but 
uh, you know, any time you can get it closer to uptake. So that's the timing part, you know, more up front, right in front of the crop at planting with the planter or whatever, or in season is ideal. You know, we do, a, we have a lot of different options, especially with liquid, yep. uh, but uh, getting it closer to when the crop needs it is really important. And not to go back to this, Phil, and I hate to beat our own drum here, but I did make that video in June that said this is going to be a problem in places. You did. And I think and it was. It was. And so, hey, you know, you know, Phil and I are out in the country. We're seeing what's happening. Oftentimes we see things coming. So stay tuned and listen in. You know? Yeah, there's a lot of, like you mentioned, uh, I just did a video not too long ago with Ashley talking about ear flex and, and understanding this time of the year what that ear is telling you even yet it's more fun in the middle of the season but seeing that abortion at the tip and stuff you need to understand where that's coming from that stress that stress could be nitrogen in a lot of cases we saw nitrogen firing up the plant uh, even shortly after pollination which is not good uh, but that that severe stress or zippering on that ear is going to be an indication of that, that nitrogen stress most likely Yep. It could be another severe stress, and but that, that was some of the symptoms that were that were, were described to me in the situations I was involved in in, in Eastern Iowa: yeah. the zippering ears, the kernel abortion. So, what happens if we apply all of our UAN, let's say, on April first? You know, as a dribble band, would it be a decent idea to put an inhibitor in there? Do you think? Yeah, in April, in, in my opinion, I still think it would be ideal because you're you're not. You know, the, the crop really isn't demanding at that. A period of rapid growth for corn is when it, it wants the most. It's going to be taken up quite a bit per day at that point, but that's not till June. Yeah. So if we have another, I hope we don't maybe have another spring like 2024, but, you know, if you put everything down April 1st, you know, it, it, you, you may not get planted till uh, late April or early May, and then, And then know, that, that inhibitor in there, instinct is what I'm speaking of, nitropyrin. It can buy you about four weeks. You know, it'll it'll help keep it in the ammonium form for about four weeks. You know, and then it starts to taper off. But if you have some big rainfalls in that four weeks, it, it can definitely help. Yeah, yeah. We don't want it moving with the water, especially down into the soil profile. The further it gets, the harder it is to chase. And if we have a, a spring like this where it's really wet, those roots aren't going to necessarily go down through a water table to get to, you know. Yep. That's that's in in essence that's what happened this year. I think in a lot of cases we saw on the, the the higher ground in some cases it was worse but in a lot of cases that was better the, the lower areas denitrified they sat ponded literally ponds for quite a while uh and, and lots those areas of are really, lots there. of denitrification so after they got through that in a lot of cases we saw that corn rebound and come come back in july june july and people thought oh it's it's going to be okay uh, but at that point the nitrogen was gone i mean yeah. it didn't have much to work with at all so yeah so those ears are if they didn't have disease and other things are really really just a small and then finally phil i'm thinking about inhibitors here and then we also know that ats ammonium thiosulfate you know it can be a reasonably effective nitrification inhibitor it can keep that nitrogen in the ammonium form you know maybe it's not quite as good as something like instinct but it it is it is reasonably effective and we may get into some more of this research here at some point, but we're doing a lot of work kind of re-looking at ATS and just how effective it is. Well, that research isn't complete yet, but we're working on that, so. Yeah, and it's always, in my opinion, you know, and your research shows it too, but especially, you know, so many years after we have so such less sulfur deposition, mm -hmm. you know, that sulfur seems to always give a little additional boost to whether it's with side dress or, you know, up front. I mean, however you're putting it down, that the, the sulfur, uh, yeah. really really helps the crop a, a lot so. well any final comments on yield variation phil uh it's not it's not fun to look at those those ears uh, sizes you know when you see really nice ears and then you see little little tiny mm -hmm. ears uh but it's the year we're given you know and that's you know we got to be thankful we have a crop uh it, it's tough to see that especially when commodity prices are low uh, but we got to remember, like I said, nitrogen is, is tough to work with. It's very mobile in the soil and, and the water, uh, and and that's that's the one most important factor we got to remember when it comes to nitrogen management. We got to we got to do what we can to plan around that so that uh, when we have years like this, which we're in a Des Moines lobe, we're not called that for nothing. I mean, this is this is usually wet, so yeah. yep. uh, that's that's got to be on the front of people's minds. Yep. Well, with that, um, I've made entire Lead Academy videos on nitrogen management. I'm sure you can learn more there about nitrogen. And please talk to your liquor growth salesman to plan for, you know, nitrogen, a nitrogen, nitrogen management program 
that is re as resistant as possible to wet weather. So talk to your local Look and Grow salesman and we'll see you soon. And thank you, Phil. You're welcome. Thank you. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow.